Hey everyone, Core here, and today we're going to take a look at this little Tiny Hawk freestyle here. And this thing has just been a, just a little beast. This thing is fantastic. But there are two uh, main flaws to this little guy here, and that is the camera and the VTX. And today I'm going to show you how to mod those two in order to get this thing to be almost perfect. So to get started, the first thing you're going to need to do is 3D print yourself a mount. And here is one here that I designed myself. There will be a link down below where you can download this for yourself to print out. It weighs just under 1.9 grams. And the two standoffs that it will be replacing weigh under just 0.4 grams. The stock camera on the Tiny Hawk Freestyle weighs in at just under 1.8 grams. And here you can see the EOS Caddx camera that I have. I went ahead and soldered off the old connector that's on the right and then I took off the connector from the stock camera and put it onto this so it's just a direct plug-in and this also ended up bringing down the weight a little bit to where we are just looking at under 3.5 grams now to really get this camera to fit well into the frame you are going to need to cut it along these dotted lines right here in order to bring the camera closer to the front of the body and you can just use like a little dremel or whatever and you can see here that it does make a nice tight fit and I did design the lines to kind of follow the lines of the frame of the Tiny Hawk here. And I think it actually ended up looking pretty good. And it actually is very functional with good camera protection. Now that we have addressed the camera, let's go ahead and address the VTX. Now this upgrade is going to be quite a bit more difficult. So you will need some pretty good soldering skills. The best VTX I found for this setup was the ready-made RC Strix Nano Cricut Micro VTX. It has a 25 and 200 milliwatt setting, which is perfect for this uh, size of quad here. It takes five volts input and has smart audio. To remove the stock VTX, you will have to get a soldering iron with a pretty good amount of heat to it. And you will place it under the board on these two pins here, and you will pry up gently on the VTX until the uh, pins let loose and you can take the board off. Once we get the VTX off you can see that it weighs just under two grams here and when we get our replacement you can see with the uh, sock antenna it is 3.2 grams and with the little Emax polarized antenna we're looking at 3.8 grams. Here are the stock soldering connections for the VTX so looking at this we know that we only need to hook up four wires so on the VTX here, you can see I have just the power wires, the video, and the audio wires. Here I wired up the power wires, just laying them on top of the, the solder pads there. And that was actually pretty difficult to get those pads separated. But on the video and uh, smart audio wire here, I actually stuck them into the hole. And that ended up being a much easier way to get the wire soldered. To secure the VTX, I just ended up using some double-sided sticky tape and I pressed it down into the middle of the board here and just secured the Emax Nano antenna with a little wire. But later on, I did make this little bracket here that added about a half a gram, but it was a much better solution to secure this antenna in place. Now that we've got everything in place in this little guy, let's go ahead and see how much weight we've added to it because we have to keep these little guys light, right? So our stock weight, we're looking at 50.64 grams. And our new weight is looking at 55.93 grams. Now that's only an increase of 5.3 grams, which isn't on the bad side at all for a little guy this small. I'd like to have been a little bit less, but we got three upgrades. We got a better camera, a better VTX, and a better antenna. For getting three upgrades for only five grams, I think that is pretty good. So let's go ahead and check out what um, our upgrades did and our video quality. All of these comparisons will be using the upgraded camera and I will be flying from the backyard out to the front of the house to test out the video signal. With the Cricut VTX at 25 milliwatts, this should be more of a test of the Emax Nano antenna over the Whip antenna, but I have a feeling that this Cricut VTX is putting out a few more milliwatts than the stock VTX. Same test here again, only we're comparing the Cricut at 25 milliwatts to 200 milliwatts, and there was a nice little jump in improvement. And the only downside of this is that your video signal is most likely going to be much better than your uh, receiver signal, and that could get you into some trouble, so that is one thing to keep in mind. Now you might be asking what software changes are needed in order to get this VTX to work. Well, in this case, the stock VTX used, used Smart Audio, 
and this new ready-made rc vtx also uses smart audio so in this case there are none all you have to do is solder that vtx in place get it all correct and you have your awesome new vtx to work in your little tiny quad here so those are the three upgrades i recommend making for this little tony hawk freestyle to make it almost perfect and if you have any questions about these upgrades please post them in the comments down below. I will put links to the uh, Thingiverse um, files to uh, 3D print these brackets and also the parts that I used in this uh, upgrade as well. I'm Corey with Crash and Burn Racing and thank you for watching.